yeah, interviewing Swiss Pascal. Uh, so I take notes. I still have the original notes right here. Uh, 1973, Pascal travels from uh, Switzerland along the Hashish Trail to Goa. Yeah, just 17. And the older freaks, uh, you know, take them in. And uh, greatly impressed, Pascal, like he says, they smoke so many chillums together, the older freaks and him, yeah. Welcome to him into the tribe. Protective if he tried. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was his scene, uh, 1973 to 1982. He hangs out in Goa during those years, at least six to nine months a year. And then he leaves India for 16 years after that until 1998. Uh, why? Pascal explains major shift in the scene when Indian police, Goan police, started busting hippies for drugs for the money. Yeah. Well, he reappeared on the scene 10 years ago and uh, he married a Himalayan mountain woman up in Manali. They have a two-year-old son named Krish, born in Goa. Um, well, on the dark side, uh, Pascal confirms what Pink Alley was saying about the rampant rape scene yeah, in Goa. Just last year, Scarlett, 15-year-old European, uh, murdered, raped and murdered. And uh, last year, 14-year-old German. Mm -hmm. Well, at the table with Pascal, there's three older heads. Great. Um, when I tell them I'm uh, writing Eddie's history, well, they all know Eddie, you know, uh, and that about the early Goa hippie days, what? They pass me a hashish joint? <laughs> My first smoke in India. First time I felt safe uh, to do that. They suggest I interview London Charlie, find him over at the Santos Bar in Chapora Village. They said, like, buy him one of those big kingfisher beers under the mango tree. He'll tell you everything. <laughs> I'm finding one heavy character leads to another. Hmm. Well, I thank Pascal for uh, his hippie history, and I'm absolutely ecstatic on the strong hashish. Yeah. I'm kind of weaving stones uh, through the sand on the beach. <laughs> Headed toward that Shiva rock sculpture at the south end of Bhagatur Beach. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I look around, huh? Oh, the beach uh, packed with uh, young Russians and Israelis on the cheap. <laughs> I saw as I realized. Hmm. That go has degenerated into the most inexpensive geet beach getaway from Europe. Similar to Waikiki in Hawaii for West Coast Americans. <sighs> yeah. Hard alcohol flooding through, drowning out the old grass and how she's seen so extensive alcohol here now. And uh, the old hippie flame of Exotica, Hashish, Shh. long gone, long gone. Mm -hmm. No more Oriental Exotica in Goa. Mm. Well, I zigzag back up the cliff, rejoin Charles from Little Vagator. We uh, motor to the Sialam Bridge that crosses the expanse of Chapora River. There's no bridge in the old days. You hit Chapora River, uh, you could give a guy in a canoe a rupee, and he'd take you nowhere, <laughs> out in the middle of it. Yeah, so we just stopped there. Yeah, no bridge or electricity. Mm -hmm. My last residence in Goa was in 1973. So, uh, well, how beautiful going over that bridge. I mean, these, you got to be there or have the book to see the picture of it. Uh, 
this beautiful river. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we park up at Margem, just on the other side in the Delta, a lot of reeds, sandy, and uh, we savor a, a large chilled Kingfisher beer. Uh huh. Good. Uh, uh, what? More, more, a cluster fuck of low class Russians and Israelis. Israelis are the worst, huh? They got to go to the military for two years, and what do they do after they get out? They get on a plane to go, and they just wreak havoc on everything. Goins don't like them. Pass counterfeit hundred dollar bills and insult the merchants. Shout at merchants. You fucking charge me too goddamn much. You know, come on. Ugh. The menus are printed in uh, Israeli and Russian. Where's the English menu? Oh, in the back. Yeah. Non-stop flight from Moscow to Goa. Commonest flying from LAX to Honolulu. Well, I walked past uh, Backpacker Babes. Young, splayed out on plastic beach chairs uh, in their bikinis. Nobody's topless, even. <laughs> and it's just, it's not sexy. It's just no sex. It's like fish in a market. You know, it's meat on slabs. It's, where's the... Yeah, the truly sexy and wild uh, freedom from my go days, from my youth, mercilessly extinguished. <laughs> Next up, Arambo, the last uh, scene in Northern Go. Uh, most young travelers prefer Arambal rather than the classic uh, Anjuna Beach. All those old hippies are over there. Huh? Yeah, they like the arm ball because arm ball is, uh, it, it doesn't have minimum creature comforts. I mean, look, Charles couldn't stay here. Uh, not a beach shacks overlooking a cliff. Beautiful photograph them. And uh, so, yeah, too primitive for mass trash tourism. Uh, so there's a stellar creative hippie buzz, you know, uh, in the atmosphere. But right now, just before Christmas, High season, even Arambo, crowded, smoky, yeah, polluted. Uh, and even just to get down to the beach from the main road, right, we're crowded in by all these stalls one after another. We can't even find a place to park the bike on the beach. Way too swamped, you know, people. Well, um... 12 kilometers from Arambol. Uh, we, cruise, uh, we cruise through primitive villages uh, with surrounding rice paddies, then pick up a wild jungle road. Yeah. Panoramic view of the Terracol River. <laughs> wow. Uh, and the road ends. The road ends uh, uh, at the river between Goa and Maharashtra Strait. You can see an old Portuguese fort on the other shore. And the beach here, Quorum Beach, oh, so beautiful. Reminds me of the old days in Goa, 40 years ago. 